Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. Again, we have Manny Pacheco. It's always a fun session. We always look forward to these sessions. How are you doing, Manny? Always happy to celebrate Hollywood. You know that, Art. <laughs> How are uh, you doing? <laughs> yeah, great. Good Art, to see you. Uh, Art and Manny, I want to take you back. I don't know what the year was, but when I first moved to California, we used to take the kids to the drive-in theater. And I was surprised because having come from the Midwest and the East Coast, there that drive-ins had been gone for 10 years. But out here, there were still two drive-in theaters that we could go to. And uh, so my kids were actually born after the era of the drive-in, I think. But we got them that experience. And it, it was a, it's a unique type of movie going, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And if, if I can be so bold to say it was my introduction to R-rated films. <laughs> <laughs> my parents would, would take us basically to really good family-friendly stuff, you know, to the movie theater. But when we went to the drive-in theaters, for some reason, we saw the more scandalous stuff. I mean, and when I say scandalous, I mean 1960s wasn't really all that. You know, I mean, we're, we're going to see Patricia, Patricia Neal and, and Jack Albertson, and the subject was Roses. I mean, that's hardly a scandalous film, but it, it is a film that was that, that earned an R rating. And, and so my, my, my dad was introducing us to more adult-themed movies, like maybe HUD, a Paul Newman film, or, you know, something like that, that, that might get by kids, but, you know, it made me appreciate dramas a lot at a, a lot younger age. And, it, you know, when they started kissing a little bit, my sister and I would have the ability to go under a blanket. <laughs> yes. Well, that I was going to say, Manny, the reason your father felt comfortable taking you there is because he knew you'd fall asleep in the back seat. <laughs> No, no. When I say under the blanket, we were hiding. I didn't fall asleep. My eyes were. I love movies so much. I I would stay awake for the entire film at night. Oh, really? I really would. Yeah. My sister might fall asleep, but I I loved him. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and they, yeah. the drive-in the drive-in theaters, uh, the, the the exhibitors, as we like to call them in the business, they were very smart. They had something for everybody. They even had a playground. Every one of them had a playground off to the side. So when the kids got bored. Mm -hmm. Mom and Dad could stay in the car, watch the movie, and the kids could go to the playground. Right. Um, so th they were very. It was a unique cultural thing, I think. That uh, sure, sure, I'm sure. So I'm sorry, it's gone. Oh, I, I agree. I, I am too. Uh, although it has made a return because of the pandemic, we'll get into that in a second. But I think Art wanted to ask something, and you, you, you kind of yeah. So the, the drive-in. Uh, 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 and obviously, you, you uh, your expertise is far beyond forgotten Hollywood, but this is sort of all, almost forgotten segment until we get to uh, some revivals that have happened because, particularly in the last year. But drive-in theaters was probably really a post-World War II phenomenon as uh, middle class developed and a lot more people had cars. Uh, because I remember uh, on, uh, uh, tell me where I'm from, Long Island. <laughs> I remember uh, the uh, Sunrise Drive-In uh, on Long Island. Uh, we didn't go in the winter too much, although you could. I, I remember once going in the winter with a, a group of friends. Uh, and of course, we had the heater all the way up and the speaker hanging on the window, which half the time you drove off with. And uh, the window, uh, but the windows were rolled down. So, you know, that was our, uh, That's right. our, our winter. But we didn't go too much. But it, it was a phenomenon of uh, what, probably the 50s, uh, when they first started becoming pretty. Prolific, uh, pro prolific. Well, you know, if you watch the film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, Brad Pitt's character, uh, he lives right on the, behind a drive-in. And of course, it's very rich in the way they display it with all the colors and the neon and all of that. And it, it really does take you back to that time when, when it was all the rage. And of course, uh, they were also limited only by the inclement weather. I mean, obviously, they would run films as long as it wasn't raining or, or, or snowing or something like that. But other than that, you know, summertime was drive-in time, if you think about it, in the past. So it's great when films can also uh, bring us back to that time. And, and, and at least in that film, um, Quentin Tarantino paid homage to the whole drive-in experience, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah. And also, they became, yeah. they became the forerunners uh, uh, as they began to die out of the swap meet. 
Yes, uh, uh, <laughs> Santa Fe Springs, the Santa Fe Springs swap meet here in Southern California used to be a drive-in theater. So yeah, yeah. you're absolutely right. I think I think there's one in Stanton as well, but but for sure in Santa Fe Springs here in California. Uh, this year, I mean, they've they've made a return in in very unique ways. I mean, I can give you some examples that'll blow your mind. They set up a drive-in uh, movie uh, uh, situation at, at Ontario Theater. Uh, to show Ford versus Ferrari um, in the middle of last summer. And they were showing a number of films. They had a whole summer film series. And you could have the drive-in experience at Ontario uh, Airport. I mean, <laughs> I guess it's big enough. I don't know if they're using a runway or not. But but folks went and they, they sold out. I mean, they actually sold out the film, uh, Ford versus Ferrari. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the one that's going on in, uh, um, in Hollywood... Uh, th th it's running now seven days a week, if you can believe that. There's a there's actually a Hollywood theater that has drive-in uh, experience seven days a week, and they charge you uh, not by individual but by car. And if you bring in five, six people, that's okay. If you come by yourself, they charge you sixty bucks, and you get the movie experience. You get uh, uh, all the goodies: popcorn, candy, ice cream, a hot dog, maybe some nachos. And they charge you 60 bucks and you get the full, you know, the full treat plus the movie experience. And wow, I mean, it's running seven days a week, winter, spring, summer, fall. I don't think it's going to go away, to be honest with you. I think it's going to stick around. Well, uh, uh, this we, particular. I, I, I would say, though, uh, there's a couple of things. I, I want to mention something about that, but we would be remiss if we didn't discuss the ultra low quality of the food consistently. At, at drive-in, because <laughs> it makes theater food, which it pretty much sucks, uh, uh, look like it's a, a gourmet feast compared to. I don't know. Uh, yeah, when you're, they're you're, pretty. When bad. you're ten years old, you're not a, a, a critic of food. <laughs> no, but I, I'm I'm saying that it it brought there was never a Frank that didn't have some recycled tire in it, as far as I remember. Uh, but getting back, getting back to, uh, getting back to, uh, why well, I don't actually think there's going to be much of a revival. It's real estate, and uh, oh, yeah. you have a yeah. multiplex on that same area with parking, on a multi-deck parking, and uh, you have uh, uh, 21 theaters there as opposed to a single theater. Yes, it's a nice experience, but I, I just don't think on particularly on inner cities. Uh, it's it's ever going to make a, a comeback. Although I will tell you that locally here, we've had uh, uh, an out, outdoor movie night at Wa like Walmart's. Any store that had a huge wall uh, would have that uh, from time to time. Well, you know who's been doing it for years is the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. They do their their uh, movie night on Halloween night outside against the wall of a mausoleum or so, and you get to experience great Halloween movies like Frankenstein or Dracula or that kind of thing. Maybe maybe something a little bit more modern. Uh, but, they, but they do a summer series, too, that they weren't able to do this year because of uh, this last year because of COVID, but they're probably going to bring it back this year, where you can go to the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, uh, sit down in, in, in the cemetery grounds, and you can bring out a blanket and a picnic and a basket, and, and you can enjoy... Movies right up against a, a wall, just like you mentioned. Now, the most, this is something I have to bring up. This is the most a unique example of the drive-in experience, but with a, with a really fascinating twist. The San Gabriel Mission Playhouse has commissioned the Pasadena Repertory, Ballet Repertory, and they're going to do a live presentation outdoors of The Wizard of Oz. Now, that sounds, so what? what what's unique about this? Everybody has to watch it from their car. <laughs> so you're not going to be outside per se. You're going to be in your car like it's a drive-in and you're going to get to watch the play uh, of The Wizard of Oz presented. And and it's going to be the drive-in experience except that all the action is live. That's funny. And, I mean, and will they have bad food and bad audio just to, like the drive-in? Well, uh, they might have bad audio. I'm not sure how they can rectify that. But the food is catered from a, from a local Pasadena eatery. Supposedly, wow. the food is going to be tremendous. And they're wow. going to have like a, 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 a bucket of over-the-rainbow popcorn. And they're going to have... <laughs> <laughs> really, there's no place that like, sounds like fun. cotton candy. 
no place like home cotton candy. Who, who doesn't want that? And so yeah. it's a new twist to the whole drive-in experience. But I mean, I, I think people are getting very creative in the way they present entertainment. And you know what? I'm all for that. And if it, if it took the pandemic to do it, I'm sorry that there was a pandemic, but it's really great that you have such an entrepreneurial spirit uh, of yeah. these of these people who are trying to distribute content like that. I'm all for that. Yeah. Well, well, as a last word, I would say that the reason I think drive-ins were special for that period of time that they existed on the scene is because it was a different kind of social experience. You know, you, you it wasn't sitting in the theater shoulder to shoulder with people. But it wasn't what we do today, which is sit home and stream a, a movie mm. uh, by yourself, pretty right. much by yourself, you and your immediate family. You were kind of crowded into a car, you know, and sometimes the kids were in the back screaming, shut up, I want to watch this movie. Or you had friends that you snuck in, in the trunk, you know, and they'd get out and I'd have to squeeze in. There might be but some it was kids a different well. kind of a different <laughs> kind of social um, experience. And I think it was, you know, it was unique. I miss those days. Oh, well, that's 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 heartfelt. And I can tell it, it's 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 sincere from you, John. So it's nice to hear. Anyway, well, I'm I'm not it's all gone to now. go to a drive-in movie with my two besties, uh, John and Manny. Okay. Well, if you pony up the 60, that's bucks, like a... I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> say good night, right, guys. Enough nostalgia. Let's say goodbye. And Manny, next time. We want to talk about something a little bit more modern than drive-in movies. Okay, oh. got it. Oh. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.